continuing the series now to help uh, you understand the main points in each one of these chapters. And the next thing we want to tackle is topic number nine, which is form and pattern. Form and pattern, the learning goal here is to be able to describe compensation as it is applied to facial growth and occlusion. And so the main way I want you to think about this is that if we looked at all of the human beings that exist on this planet and we looked at their way the first molars came together, we would see that if we were looking at a skull here, over half of all the people in the world, their first molars would occlude in what we call the class one position. And what's important beyond that is that 97% of all the people in the world would occlude within three millimeters, which is only three dimes thickness, either in front or behind of the class one position, what we call class two or class three. So the issue becomes, how can all the variation we see in the world result in the first molars coming together within six millimeters of a certain spot? And the answer to that question is one word, and the answer is compensation. And we see this compensation as an evolution of human beings throughout time. If we look at the skull here, which is a Neanderthal skull from 58,000 years ago, the class one molar relationship is present on this skull in the same way that it's present on this skull from 1930. So how does it happen? How do, how does, how do all of these variations in the human face result in the molars fitting in such, such a tight, tight span of, of space, six millimeters? Well, it's the idea of one part making up for another part, compensation. Look at this tripod here. I can set it down on the table, and it can be set perfectly level. Now, if I lengthen one of the legs, I can rebalance this, and I don't know if you can see this well, but here you've got the main leg, and then you've got the interior leg, and then you've got a little stretch. So these two units, plus this unit, added up to the normal. Here, we don't even need the third unit. It's hardly there at all, so you have the second one and the third. So that is resulting in the same length. And then you look at the third one, where the second unit is bigger, is slightly smaller than the third. So what you see here are compensations. We end up with the same overall result, but different compensations in each leg of that, tri of that tripod. In the human face, it's the same way. All of these compensations occur. And where do they start and how does it work? That's what I'm going to talk about now. So I'm going to go over to the board, and we're going to talk about positioning now the first molar. What anatomical parts end up related to the position of this first molar? Well, we know that the face is built on what? The cranial base. So we have the anterior cranial base, and we have the posterior cranial base. And the junction here, we call the cranial base angle. Now, associated with the anterior cranial base is the structure we call the maxilla. And now embedded in the maxilla are the structures we call the teeth. And so we'll just, we'll just say now if we have the maxillary first molar tooth here, slightly big compared to, the, compared to the maxilla, but you get the idea that the position now of the maxillary first molar is determined in part by the cranial base angle, the position of the maxilla, and then the position of this tooth within that bone. Likewise, for the mandibular molar, we've got the posterior cranial base, and what articulates with the posterior cranial base but the mandibular condyle, 
we've got the ramus, and then we've got the mandible, and the alveolar process. So now we have articulation here with the posterior cranial base. We've got our ramus. We've got our corpus. And then we have the alveolar process, mandibular alveolar process. So it's all of these parts that are like the different legs of the, tri of the tripod. But of course, here there's many more parts because it's much more complex. The human face and the jaws are one of the most complex structures of the whole body. So the morphology here, all of these component parts can compensate or decompensate for the positions that we find in the, fi in the molar world. So let's look at this in another way. Assume, for now, that the cranial base doesn't change, okay? But the maxilla is more forward on the cranial base. And we still want to get the molars to fit together. How can we do that? There's a couple of options, lots of options actually. We could position the maxillary molar further back than usual. Okay, that would be one option. We could put the maxillary molar in the same relationship, but position the mandibular alveolus further forward so that you end up with the alveolus on the mandible being more forward to compensate for the maxilla being more forward. So all of these component parts are able to adjust to allow the molar occlusion to be within this six millimeter range. And that is really the amazing thing about the human face and occlusion. And most of orthodontic treatment, most, most of what we do in the specialty of orthodontics is try to identify, one, where the compensations are, okay? which of these compensations are beneficial, which of, the comp which of these compensations are not beneficial, and then decide what ones we can change, what ones we want to leave. And that is the art of modern diagnosis of malocclusion. Now in this course, we're just starting at the very, very beginning. So what I would like you to understand is that all of these parts can be compensated or decompensated to affect the occlusion of the teeth. And that is, in essence, the idea of compensation. Compensation reduces the variation at the level of the occlusal plane and allows for, across the whole world, the first molars to come into contact within three millimeters, either in front or behind the class one position. So I hope that helps you understand a little bit about anatomic compensation, what it means. Uh, the reading should give you more information. This is a very complex chapter, so we will we'll be talking about this quite a bit uh, in the application. So thank you very much, and I hope this helps.